Hey, I'm Emily from Good Offset, and I'm here today with an old friend. So I had sold my, my Funk Beta on Reverb just because I didn't use it very much. Uh, and the, the buyer got back to me and he said, it didn't work. I'm like, okay. Uh, so he, we kind of had this back and forth. He didn't really want to like show it not working. He didn't really want to troubleshoot. So I got it back and I'm going to open it and uh, see if we can figure out what's going on here. I meant to grab a, did he just reuse the old priority envelope? Whatever. And what the hell? Why is there so much tape involved? Yeah, he did. Oh, okay. These things are free. Why don't you just get a new one? There she is, my old friend. I was kind of regretting selling you, so let's uh turn up. All right, I'm gonna apologize. I'm gonna mute all of this while I'm uh, setting this up. So I know it powers on, let's put you over here, not my favorite placement. Well that works, out of the box, works. video ever but um obviously the pedal works so i want to talk to you a little bit about envelope filters and why they might not work so when i first got the flunk beta i didn't read the manual just kind of plugged it in turned everything all the way down so i could go up i'm like i don't like that sound And then I read the manual and actually learned that one of these controls the low and one controls the high. So sorry this is too fun I need to I need to stay on topic um and so, all right I'm gonna talk about the what I think was happening with the person that was not getting felt like this wasn't working um with an envelope filter it's it's relying on the input coming into the pedal, which is the output from your guitar or whatever's in front of it in the chain. And so even if you have the sensitivity all the way up, if you turn down the volume on your guitar, it's not going to work because without uh, the a hotter input, you, you're not going to get any sound because it's fi essentially filtering out the quieter signal and then it's doing its funky thing with the other knobs. But so this knob, like, even if you have it turned all the way up, <laughs> which 
which is sometimes why you'll talk, you'll see people talking about, um, pedals not seeming to work. And that's why these have that sensitivity knob so that if it, it can compensate, if the signal that you're sending in, if you have low output pickups or something like that, uh, you can get that to the right spot. And that's why this has such a wide sweep. Cause like you could have extremely hot pickups with extremely high output, or you could have really super duper passive pickups that have very little output for whatever reason. Um, very uncompressed signal. <laughs> so, um, I asked the, the gentleman who bought this pedal a, a couple questions and, uh, one, when he said, he sent a video and how I knew that this pedal probably still worked when he sent this video was he had everything cranked and we turn my volume all the way down. And I heard that little coming out of the amp. So I sent him a message and I said, Hey, really quickly, is the volume on your guitar all the way up? Do you know what the output of your pickups is? And uh, have you tried it with any other instruments? Of course, I also asked, did you try it with isolated power? He said yes. He sent a video of it turning on an isolated power. I was pretty sure that wasn't it. And uh, he sent me the video of, of that little gentle thwomp thwomp. But he, I, when I asked him those questions, he, he said he didn't want to troubleshoot it anymore. And that, of course, the volume on his instrument wasn't up all the way because he was afraid that it was going to um, blow up his amplifier. So I, I, I think it was on 60 Cycle Hum uh, this past week where they, they talked about, uh, someone talked about how it kind of, so they were talking to someone who had just recently discovered that maybe you should turn up the volume on your instrument. <laughs> And um, my advice is if you're playing an envelope filter, you have to turn up your volume all the way. That is turn it down on the amp if you're afraid of it being too loud. Start with it low and kind of like work your way up. But in my opinion, the only reason you should turn down the volume on your guitar, like it's cool with fuzz pedals to do that because it'll give you a, a more of an overdriven sound. Uh, if you're doing pinky swells, super cool. If you're dealing with something um, where you can't really control the level on the pedal and it's going straight into direct, for example, the Dark Glass Alpha Omega always ran hot. So when I was demoing that on the bass, I had to turn my volume down. But for the most part, start with your pedals, with your volume on your guitar up all the way and probably your tone up all the way. Uh, that's the first thing I would do in troubleshooting. So question, was your volume up all the way on your pickups? No. Okay. Well, that's the problem. But if the answer had been yes, I would have wanted him to, to look up what the output on his, on his pickups was, because if it was a low output, that would also explain it. Um, perhaps if he has an instrument with such a low output, maybe he should get a booster or maybe it's just not the pedal for him. In which case, you know, it doesn't mean the pedal doesn't work. If you bought a pedal as is kind of a, not really my problem, but fine. I'm happy to have back my pedal that works. And three, trying it with a different instrument. So if you don't know what the pickup output is, or you think it's probably fine, if you plug in an instrument that you know has hotter pickups or different output, see if, see if that fixes the problem, right? Cool. So, um, that's not really the only thing that this, this gentleman talked about with, with this pedal. He also, so I'm going to take off uh, this guitar. I'm going to try. I'm going to unplug. We're not going to, we don't need this anymore. And I am going to try to show you one other thing that he was uh, saying was going on. And all right, let me just get my volume all the way down. I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. He said there's a rattle in this pedal. So I'm going to go run and grab a screwdriver and see if I can unscrew this. Um, and I will be right back. So when this gentleman was trying to show me that my pedal was, 
that I sold him was broken. Um, he, he mentioned the, the rattle. Um, and I said, it kind of sounds like it could be a battery clip. How about you open it up and see if there's something rattling around there? Cause if there was like a chip or a dia that obviously been clipped or missing in this, yeah, obviously it's not going to work. Return it. But he refused to do that. Um, I am not sure why, but I'm going to do it. I love this drill. I don't think it's gonna. The DeWalt drill, it's got a little light at the end. Boom! Okay. There's a battery clip. I'm gonna put this over here. So there's a battery clip in this pedal. That would explain why it was rattling around. Um, nothing else is floating around in there. It's surface, it gets mounted, so I can't really look around in there, nor would I want to. And I think that would probably avoid the warranty. I don't think it's still under warranty, but like Mr. Black, these pedals are tanks. I've not had one fail on me yet. So I was very surprised when he was saying that um, if he had opened it up to realize that the rattle was truly just the, uh, this, this guy here and nothing else was floating around. Oh my gosh. Yeah. How about it? Uh, yeah. So I'm really excited to have back this pedal and to know it's in working order. Um, but okay. I'm going to go on a small rant here. Um, so a lot of people on reverb, they sell pedals as is, especially used stuff because they don't want, cause like if you're just a seller selling, uh, and you're not a business, you don't want people to be using your time and energy as a try to like, you don't want people to showroom your stuff, try it before you take it home and that kind of thing. That's why I think that these demo channels like, like mine are, are so important and why I've really been digging into it and doing more of it lately is because you can't go to stores right now and try stuff and some builders like smaller builders they're they don't they're not in every store so it's you're not always going to be able to buy their stuff um or try it out before you buy it so you watch demos you read up on it you read the manual you check it out you see what's going on and then you you buy it so i sold this as is um I don't really do a return policy unless something is broken, pretty normal. I've actually changed my policy now so that there's a restocking fee because this was not a fun thing to deal with. Um, it, if you buy something online and it doesn't work, it, it's sad, it sucks, it's really a bummer. And if you reach out to the seller and ask for help and that person's willing to help you, troubleshoot with you, try to figure out what's going on, could you send a bit, like send, whenever something doesn't work, send a video, explain what you've already done to troubleshoot. Say, I've tried different patch cables. Cool. So we know it's not a patch cable. Uh, it's, I've tried two power supplies. Cool. So we know it's not a power supply and then see what questions the seller asks to like help you understand what's going on with the pedal. Um, my biggest issue with this person was that he didn't want to send proof that the pedal wasn't working, which was suspicious enough to me. Um, and I was trying to help and he didn't want any help. I think honestly that uh, one of two things happened. He didn't realize, like maybe he has really low output pickups in general, like a little wash burn bass. Maybe he doesn't ever turn up the volume all the way or maybe there's something wrong with his bass. Um, it, like, it was passing a dry signal, so I, I don't think there was something completely wrong with it. But um, if someone's trying to help you, let them help you. And if someone doesn't want to help you, if someone, if, if, if you buy something, it doesn't work and they're not trying at all. Like if it's broken, it's broken. You bring in reverb.com support to help. Um, to, like understandable. Yes, they're great. Reverb support is great. They helped me out. They have my back. They're making sure that I'm getting my restocking fee. Um, and they paid for the shipping back, which I appreciated. So like Reverb's team was great, but like sometimes friends, 
it's not the pedal. Sometimes it's some user error. Sometimes it's something else in your equipment. Be kind and give a little bit of the benefit of the doubt that the seller is not trying to fleece you. I was trying to work with this buyer and I think that he thought I was trying to screw him and I really just wanted him to be able to get this pedal working. I'm not gonna make assumptions about like, in, like whether or not he intentionally knew it worked. I, I'm not gonna assume that, but uh, it was fresh. It was a frustrating thing to deal with. But I will say this kind of goes into one other thing. This video shouldn't be 20 minutes long, so I'm gonna try to keep this short. Um, Reverb.com recently raising their selling fees by one and a half points, so from three and a half to five percent. Reverb lost money on this transaction because they not only are they uh, giving back my restocking fee. Uh, they're going to help me boost this if I, if I decide to sell it again. They're going to do a free boost on it um, for my time. But the amount of time that uh, the people, I think it was Nicholas and Nicole, helped me figure out this problem, work out a solution, talking to the buyer on my behalf when he was not interested in or not understanding that you have to send proof that the pedal's not working if you're going to return a pedal that you bought as is. Uh, like if that was like 30 minutes of their time and they make 15 bucks an hour, which they should like, ah, yeah, reverb lost money, reverb lost money on this transaction. And it, the, the reason they have these fees is so that when like one in a hundred <laughs> transactions goes wrong, it doesn't wipe out the money that they made on the other ones. And for the level of support that they provide to buyers and sellers over eBay, which doesn't really seem to protect sellers at all or like a PayPal like a, a bro deal on PayPal PayPal typically sides with the, the buyer eBay typically sides with the buyer and if this person had gone through those channels and potentially gotten their money back and I didn't get the pedal back that would have been a major problem and it's for reasons like that that I don't want to sell through Facebook marketplace if I have to ship it and if I don't get to meet the person locally and hand it off and give them cash money or get cash money. Um, I don't ever want to do that because of what happened with this pedal. There is nothing wrong with this pedal. This pedal clearly works. I, on camera, took it out of the box and showed it to you. I would have been screwed out of, I would have been out 150 bucks or whatever I sold this pedal for. I don't really remember. Um, I, that would have sucked. That really would have sucked, but I'm more than willing to pay Reverb 5% of the things that I sell uh, to get that kind of support when I need it. And I hope I never need it. It's insurance. That's what you're paying for. You're paying for insurance. You're paying for this platform. They spend a lot of money and time and energy to build. They pay people to staff it. They people pay people to uh, boost the SEO of the entire website so that when someone is searching Mr. Black Flonk better for sale. They find your listing on Reverb instead of eBay or somewhere else. So keep that in mind. It's such a small price to pay for that security. If you've ever bought insurance ever, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna end this video. This is not like my normal kind of video. So I apologize for that. Um, Thank you for watching. Thanks for understanding. I have no ill will towards this buyer. I'm glad I got my pedal back in working condition. Uh, I figured it wasn't really broken. And I don't know if I'm going to sell it again. Uh, I was kind of sad to see it go. <laughs> I kind of missed it. And uh, when I filmed the video of it, I was like, this is a fun pedal. And when I watched the demo again during the premiere, I was like, I'm, I made a mistake. Uh, I've made a huge mistake. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for understanding. Please like, comment, subscribe. Once again, my name is Emily. Uh, <laughs> goodbye.